and welcome to another episode of the Socialistics Podcast, Social Media Agency Stories. I am really excited about our guest today. Uh, it has been planned for a few weeks. Uh, full disclosure, uh, we are a client of Hike, and they are um, an awesome, awesome partner of ours. They uh, are basically an online concierge financial platform for those that are self-employed. They really, they help me not worry about my finances and taxes and things of that nature. And they do it in a really cool uh, way, basically using Slack. I have a team at my disposal and the biggest frustration point that I've had in my business in the first uh, few months is having to worry about stuff that I don't know anything about, which is basically the financial and tax side of things. So I kind of tried the old fashioned methods and then a colleague of mine uh, referred me to hike and I haven't looked back since. Uh, it's just such a valuable partner to have uh, direct access to on a regular basis. Uh, when I have questions, it's great that I can ask them in Slack and get those answers. It's just been so awesome and I really wanted to bring them on today uh, to talk a little bit about uh, their journey as a company and, and how they can help agencies because I think if anybody out there owns an agency or is thinking about it, this is definitely something to consider that lets you focus on what you do best and and, and have a partner in place that's going to help you with the things that you don't want to be thinking about. So today I want to welcome Human Radford, who is the CEO of Hike. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm pumped. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm really excited. So let's just kind of dive right in. Uh, tell the audience a little bit about yourself, your background, and, uh, and how that led you to uh, Hike. Sure. So uh, I uh, was born in London, raised in the States. I actually grew up in Pittsburgh, uh, so no Steelers comments, please, on this whole entire podcast. Um, but I've always been interested in tech, grew up coding, designing, uh, and when I went to school, there was a little thing called the dot-com boom and burst, and uh, I got hooked on the idea that you could use tech uh, to start making change. So I got into entrepreneurship then, uh, right after grad school. So started my first company, uh, Add This, which was a marketing automation platform. Uh, some of your audience might be familiar with it, might have even used it. Uh, it's tools uh, for website providers, helps them increase traffic and engagement. Uh, we also provided a number of other tools uh, that involved personalization and data. Ended up uh, selling that to Oracle. It became part of Oracle Data Cloud. And then uh, continued the journey uh, around uh, entrepreneurship. At this time, instead of me building the company, helping others build their companies. So uh, became a founding partner at Expa, uh, and it's a venture capital firm that builds and invests in startups. Um, my partners were amazing. One of my partners started StumbleUpon and uh, Uber. The other uh, started uh, Foursquare. And uh, we were just a group of entrepreneurs that wanted to help other entrepreneurs succeed. And it's been a blast working there for the last couple of years, building up that program. We work with over 50 companies. Um, and that's really what led uh, me uh, to hike. And so when we were at Expa helping entrepreneurs, one of the things we saw, Jason, that was really interesting is it really sucks uh, when you're trying to set up mm -hmm. and run your company, right? So we had this program called Startup in a Box, where it would tell you how to form your company, how to choose an accountant, how to set up your credit card, you know, the whole thing. And the realization I had is, what do you do if you're a small business and you don't have venture capital and you don't have all this program? And so that inspired me to explore this idea of um, how do you help the largest group of entrepreneurs, which are SMBs. And I met my co-founders, and uh, they were actually interested in the same concept in parallel, but for self-employed people who were businesses of one, right? And I thought to myself, wow, if it was really tough for a small business that has, I don't know, 10, 20 people, how bad is it if you're just starting out, hanging up your shingle, and you're one person? And that's really what inspired hike and what set it going. And, um, you know, our, our vision is pretty simple. We, we want to make sure that you can focus on your passion, not your paperwork. It's, it's too complicated to start running these things. And we want to be uh, your, your back office, your partner, you know, helping you be the hero in the background. So that's how I got here. Awesome. So I love you that you brought up Uber because I, I use this example or this story. Uh, one of my favorite words that I use all the time uh, is just disrupt or disruption. And I usually, I, I tee it up because I, I envision not that I was in the room, but I would have loved to have been a fly in the wall when Uber was invented. Like, I just think back, I just think to what that scenario must have been like, like, you know, this, sitting in the room, what, what sucks about 
getting a taxi or trying to get a ride somewhere? Like what, what are the things that people absolutely hate about it? And I imagine making this list and like, uh, tipping is always a pain in the ass. I don't understand that. Or just all the things that people really just despise about that experience. And then just imagining them, okay, well, we're going to do it this way. Just creating the ideal experience for a consumer to get from one from place A to place B. And, uh, and that's kind of the line of thinking that I've tried to have as an agency is how can we disrupt? How can we do things that companies despise about working with agencies? So my question to you is, how does Hike disrupt? What are the, what are, in your opinion, what are the disrupting things that you guys do that flips this sort of service offering from traditional methods? Well, I think our disruption is, is in simplicity. So before us, if you were self-employed, you're sitting up, you know, your business one, and you know this better than anyone, Jason. Yeah, it's basically you and Google, right? And so you're trying to figure out, all right, well, what, how do I form my company? Am I an LLC? Am I an S-Corp? I heard my friend saying I could save money in S-Corp, but what's the difference? And then you use Google to go ahead and figure out, okay, well, do I, what do I need? A, I need a, a bank account. Oh, wait, what's that EIN thing? Is that first or last? And effectively, it's you researching, figuring out this path um, by hook or by crook. And much like I think Uber is an interesting analogy, right? Uh, Uber said, hey, wait, I'm going to simplify the process of you getting a ride down to one button. You're going to hit this button and you're going to have a personal driver. What we're saying is we're going to simplify that process of you thinking about how to start, how to set up your QuickBooks, how to set up Gusto, how to set up that whole stack and having an expert in case you have any questions down to signing up for one service and that's hike. And so that simplification is really the common thread because our belief is these things are important, they're necessary, but that's not the core of your business. The core of your business is like the ingenuity you're going to bring on, you know, the advice that you bring to your clients, maybe whatever a designer, you know, that insight they have, they should be spending their time there, not on how their chart of accounts is set up, not on whether or not they have compliance due and, you know, the millions of other problems. And so that's what we're about. We're about making your life simple. And I think if we create that one place that we can make it simple and you get peace of mind. And by the way, we pay, we make sure you make more money, which is kind of the interesting part about the way we do things with uh, focusing on S corporations. We think that's going to, you know, really help the entrepreneurs and in, in, in the community that we want to serve. Yeah. I love that. Uh, you've touched on this a little bit. Maybe you can go on a little bit deeper into, into what the, the actual experience is like for business and owners, but especially for marketing agencies. How can, how can a marketing agency or somebody that's starting out as a freelancer um, really benefit from, from using Hike? Well, I think uh, the benefit starts from, you know, the beginning of our process, which is typically the beginning of most processes, which is what entity do I form, right? Where do I start? And so uh, we work with people who are, um, you know, at the, who are great freelancers who are serious about this being their core business. And, um, the structure we recommend highly and we designed our whole back office process around is this S Corp. And um, where we get you started is we'll, we'll form you for free, right? So how, how great is that, right? So uh, we'll go ahead and, and set up that S Corp. So set up LLC and elected. And a lot of people you'd be surprised don't understand the benefits of that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I've done, you know, I've invested in, you know, 30 plus companies personally. I've, I've started businesses I didn't understand uh, how much money is being left on the table by people not electing to be an S corp until I dug into it. And uh, it's really phenomenal. I mean, you're talking about billions of dollars that are going to the government that are meant for you. And that's a lot when you're making, you know, hundred to $200,000, you get five to $10,000 back, you know? So it's really meaningful for us to be able to help people realize that. And that's, that's really where we start with a, you know, we have an online wizard. You can go, it's really easy to help set that up and you have someone to call if you have an issue um, and, and that's kind of the theme of what we want to have. We want to have technology and software that helps guide you through it, but there is a person who is your concierge and, and a team. And you mentioned Slack, um, you know, you, you assigned a team, uh, that can help you because you're, you have your own business. You have your own questions. There are always subtleties there. And we want to make sure you don't feel like you have to sit there and go to Google and go to other places. That that's really our aspiration. Yeah. I, I, and I really want to highlight that. I mean, there's a lot of benefits that I've gleaned from 
partnering with you guys. I think really the biggest one that stands out for me is just, you touched on simplicity, but I would add another word, accessibility. I think what I've experienced as a business owner using traditional accounting or bookkeeping services is just like you have a question and you need it answered and like you try to pick up the phone or you send an email and maybe they'll get back to you that day or it just, there isn't that, that instantaneous or, or quick turnaround to get the information that you need to be able to kind of not have to worry about something. To, so, so for me, that has been the biggest takeaway uh, in terms of why this has worked so well, especially in the current environment and, and the, the world that we live in, uh, just to be able to have access to a team and in a short period of time to kind of get the answers to the questions you have has just been, it's been game changing. I mean, I absolutely, um, absolutely have loved having that kind of accessibility. So uh, I just really wanted to drive. And we, and we think that that's, that's something that is, uh, we, we want to get better and better and better. And, and the beauty of technology is that we can, with that's going to, we're going to enable the folks that are serving you that are on your team. Uh, and I love that word partner that you use because we, we don't want to be viewed as anything other than working with you as part of that team, because, you know, look, I've built companies that are, you know, pretty large at this point. I've, I've invested in a couple of uh, unicorns that are multi-billion dollar companies. And I'll tell you, even you hear this mythology about the founder, right? And there are these, I mean, you have these Herculean stories of jobs, but they're as good as the people around them. Mm-hmm. And we want to be those people. And we're okay that you don't hear about us. In fact, that's our goal. <laughs> we want to be in the background, but uh, you know, that, that really is gratifying for us to serve you guys as a community to, to build that out because the largest sector of entrepreneurs in the country are, are these solopreneurs and it's growing fast with COVID in particular. I mean, you, I'm sure you've seen your friends, uh, mm-hmm. you know, how many people are you seeing jumping into it, Jason? I mean, yeah. it's gotta be crazy in marketing yeah. in particular. It's got, it's gotta be a groundswell. Yeah. Well, I, would, uh, I think you guys are positioned really well. Cause I just think this, I think we're already headed in this, in this direction yeah. anyway. And then the pandemic has just reinforced um, or, or probably kind of turbo boosted more and more people working from home, more and more people wanting to do their own thing. So I think the model that you have just makes sense. You know, people, we live in a world where people have an expectation of getting answers and getting what they need quickly. So I think the companies that are able to do that are the ones that are going to thrive and the ones that don't are going to be left behind. So, so on that note, so what, um, you know, what, uh, what does the future look like for hike? Like, what are you excited about, passionate about uh, in terms of, you know, what, what the evolution of this company looks like? Well, I think first and foremost, um, we always think about, you know, our customers, uh, our members rather, and our, our community first. And so what we want to do is we want to deliver that peace of mind to you. And, we'll, and we've been able, I think, to start to realize that vision with, hey, we're going to help you set up the company. We're going to help you set up the charter accounts and the tools. And we're going to help you set up the payroll. And that's the basics. And we want to continue that. But what we're hearing back from our partners, and I, like, I love that word, our members, it, is that, um, hey, look, there's more to do. What's, how do I, I want to retire. I want my 401k. I want to have insurance. And so we're realizing through feedback from our community that, this is there's a bigger uh, platform to be built here if we want to realize that vision. And so I think we're excited about trying to keep understanding how we can better serve the community and you guys. And I think they're, they're, these other additions are, are going to be helpful because we can we can be that startup in a, in a box. We can deliver that business in a box and, you know, make it simple because why should you have to go to an accountant and a lawyer and, you know, have maybe some assistant do your compliance. I mean, there's so many people that you'd have to orchestrate to do what we do. Um, and, and we just think that that's not the future. The future is simple. Yeah. I've got uh, another example I want to give is um, I've had two, two particular instances that were unique to us that um, you guys have been great around, like with the PPP loan program, we were, um, we were lucky to kind of get in on that, but there's just so much unknown about that, how it works and navigating that. I mean, and you're right, like Google, you go there and you just, you have no idea how to navigate this thing and, and having folks on your team that are, oh, by the way, like, what do I need to be thinking about this? And just that the ability to ask those questions, get answers, get guidance for things that just get thrown at you is just a tremendous value add. So I've, I've been, I've gotten help navigating that. I've gotten help 
trying to figure out, I've had somebody that's interested in investing in us and I have no idea, like, how do I figure out a valuation for where I'm at right now? Like, how do I navigate that? I've been able to kind of count on your team to help me navigate that because they've, you know, they've kind of been intimate with our, with, with our business and, and how it's grown and they're in a position to kind of provide that value. And maybe that's not even in, you know, the terms of service, but, you know, they had no problem, you know, being able to help me navigate that and provide that information. So it's been a really great, um, a really great experience. I'm really excited about what you guys have built and, and I've seen it kind of evolve even over the past six months uh, as it's cut and uh, continued to get, uh, get better and better. So that's been awesome. But uh, so that's great. So about that. So let's, I want to talk a little bit more about, you know, just you in general and, and what you're seeing in the landscape, but, you know, just, you know, you've, you've been around the block, you've done a lot. And uh, I'm just kind of curious about what your thoughts are on the freelance space in general, you know, especially considering our current situation, like where do you see it going and, and how do you see that impacting um, how we do business in the near future? Well, I think, uh, you know, the freelance space is going to become more significant. And at least in my mind, I'm starting to think about it differently. So just to, to by way of background, you know, I've, I've invested in Uber, I've invested in an on-demand company called Truck, uh, Convoy that is in the trucking space. Um, you know, I've seen this happen more and more, uh, you know, even when you're looking at uh, contractors that are going into the restaurant business with the companies like Sweetgreen, you know, that... Uh, I was lucky enough to to work with. And I think what we're seeing is the continuation of a pretty huge macro trend um, right now. And, and, you know, the estimates are hard, but you you see, you know, 20, 30 million people that are businesses of one. And I think what you're seeing with COVID now, because everyone's moving to this remote environment and because there's more uncertainty that traditional companies have been more inclined both to hire remote workers, but also contractors in their local markets. And that's creating this boom effect. So I think you're going to see a huge acceleration in this marketplace. But unfortunately, it's not easier. It's not like the government's coming out and saying, oh, you know what? I just realized that there's X percent more growth in the sector. Let's make it easy for you to form your entity. Let's make it easy for you to file taxes. Let's make it easy. That's not the case. And so... I think that there are going to be a lot more companies in and around what, you know, this, this space, whether it's from, you know, what we're doing and, and helping you on the back office or even, you know, on the front end, you know, more tooling on things like invoicing, things like tracking mileage. There's, there's a whole stack that there's just this massive pressure that's being created where people say, I need something now. And uh, I think you're going to see a lot of innovation um, around that. And it's, it's actually being driven also by, again, the, co- the companies themselves. Um, some interesting debates that are going to occur around this now are, um, you know, you see what's happening with Uber and Lyft in the California market. Um, how you classify some of the workers that are in this quote unquote gig economy, right? In particular, these mobile uh, workers who are either delivery, driving and whatnot. I think that's going to have um, some ripple effects across the states, depending on how that gets sorted out in that particular segment. But, you know, believe it or not, while it is a large part of the segment, you, people like you are much more indicative of, of that economy, actually. There's, a, you know, realtors, there's doctors, there's solo practitioners. This is a large phenomenon that has only been growing. And so, um, yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see how these these uh, these things play out. How would you, if you were going to advise somebody who's wanting to go off on their own? Uh, whether it's starting a business, whether it's being a, a freelancer, like what are the top two or three things, top two or three things that come to mind that you would uh, advise them on to really be thinking about out of the gate to set themselves up for success? That's a good question. So I, I think it depends on where, when you say they're going out there, uh, for example, to start out on their own, if they're, if they're committed to doing it wholeheartedly, meaning they're not going to do it as a side gig. I would say there's some simple things that you can do right away. I would immediately get a business banking account or a banking account and have one credit card and start swiping your expenses in one credit card. I think the number, I know that sounds simple, but the number of people you'll see that start jamming up their personal card and then later have another card, it creates a nightmare for you administratively later on. But if you can go 
to an accountant, maybe later when you've decided to commit to that field and say, hey, everything's on this one card, you've really reduced your cost of accounting and simplified your life. Um, so that's, that's one thing I would say is, is really important. And I would say the other one uh, that's important is what's your, what's your go to market? What's your differentiation? So I don't care how big you are. When you hang up your shingle, it's, it's a pretty competitive world out there. And if you understand how you're different, that's when you can start using marketing effectively, right? And I'm sure some of your clients see this. I think sometimes people think because they're a freelancer, they don't have to worry about their personal positioning, their personal branding, you know, what makes them distinct. And I think actually you have to worry about even more. Uh, and so I would invest, you know, and tactically and just, just get one, one card, mm. get on that if you're going to start doing business on your own. But the other is, okay, what's your, what's your angle? Right. And that's going to help you and reflect. So whether it's in your social media or in some cases, people are even doing, you know, paid, paid marketing, whether it's like local on Yelp, it depends on, again, are your contract or whatnot. But um, I've seen people make mistakes on, on that front because they think, oh, I'm just going to I'm just going to go out there and get going and start. Yeah. I love that first uh, piece of advice. I, I did not do that, but I moved to it pretty quickly, uh, getting um, a credit card under the business, not only for just to build up credit for it, but. Um, it keeps everything so organized and separate from personal. And uh, probably the biggest thing is if you get the right one, you've earned thousands of dollars in free like points, like just running normal business. Exactly. Expenses. It's like, and, and I, ne I never, I mean, I knew that that stuff existed, but I think when you run a business, I mean, you're, you're seeing a lot more, um, just uh, a lot more, you're spending a lot more typically uh, than you are personally. And that, that adds up. I can't even say, um, how amazing that has been. Exactly. It's, it's if you're money. making, I mean, you might have 30, 30, 40,000 dollars in expenses. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about a lot of money, you know, that could pay for flights that could pay yep. for meals. I mean, it's, it's, it's real. And so I think that's another great reason why, you know, to do that. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's a great point. Um, so just, um, just you personally, I mean, obviously you've had uh, quite a bit of success in your career. I'm just kind of curious, you know, what are the things that you pay attention to or, or use to kind of continue to learn, stay on top of the curve? Um, what do you read? What do you listen to? Just things along those lines. So I'm, uh, I think, uh, a lot of my team who, you know, will tell you I'm, I'm a bit of a nerd here. And, uh, one of my favorite things to say is, um, everyone should continuously improve. And I think I love this idea of beginner's mind. There's a word in uh, Japanese word called Kaizen, which means continuous improvement. So that's one book that I love. It's, uh, it's specifically around, you know, uh, a process that they did for uh, manufacturing, but the principle that I like. And so I love this question. Uh, in terms of staying up to date, I, I'm just a pretty voracious reader. Um, I read about book or two a week. Um, and I try to, uh, I try to follow accounts um, on social media uh, for people that are interested in self-improvement, productivity hacks, uh, whatnot, and, and I engage in conversation. I'm constantly posting. I'm actually very active asking people for recommendations either on Twitter or Facebook for book lists for things to read. And so I think much like what we believe at Hike in terms of us engaging the community to, to help us chart our future, I actually leverage social media pretty heavily to understand what the people I admire, what the people I think are doing great things are learning and reading. And, and then I can curate my list of, of improvements. Awesome. Love it. What, uh, I always love asking this question. So to me, I, I always believe that, you know, life, life really stems down to, you know, what, what do you get excited about? Like I, I'm always pursuing things that I get excited about personally, and professionally. So I'm kind of curious in your life personally or professionally, like what, what is it that, you know, you're super passionate about that. You're excited about above all in terms of what you do. So, you know, there's this, um, there's the, I don't know if you're a Disney fan, but, uh, at, uh, Disney world and in the Disney empire, they have this term called Imagineer Yep. and they are forging the, a reality that they envision with their imagination. And so I always, think of myself that way. So from a young age, I, I was drawing, you know, all the time, or I play guitar, or I'm writing, or I'm coding. So for me, expressing, taking something from an idea, and seeing it come to life is a huge joy for me, which is why, for me, entrepreneurship is the ultimate creative platform. You create a business, didn't exist before. And not only are you seeing your dream come to life, but 
you know, in the case of Hike, we have a bunch of people who are aligned on the same mission and our, what we're doing is now we're unlocking your dreams, right? You come and work with us and we're helping you unleash that. So it's this exponential, you know, compounding of, of that joy, if you will, of creativity. So um, I would say, I would say anything that involves creating a more positive world. Sometimes I want to do a one-on-one, right? I draw a picture or jam on my guitar but the, the realization that truly is, is, um, has been entrepreneurship, being an entrepreneur and now uh, serving entrepreneurs at Expo and now serving entrepreneurs at, at a huge scale, I hope. I hope, you know, hundreds of thousands of people we can, we can help and make their uh, lives better and realize those dreams. Yeah, no, I love that. I uh, actually had the... Uh, about it was, it was a while ago, but I got to go on that tour. They have a tour where you can kind of go behind the scenes at Disney and kind of see the how they do what they do. It's pretty... Uh, it's pretty amazing how the you, most people don't realize what goes into everything that they create uh, and provide in terms of that experience. So that uh, I, that speaks to me. I definitely uh, know what that's all about. So um, this has been great. Is there anything that I didn't ask you today that uh, you think might be helpful for the audience that you'd want to share? Or? Um, I would say the only thing you'd ask me about some tips. I'm going to give give a free one. All right. Um, I like it. For those of those folks that are in business for themselves, or they are thinking about, uh, you know, they've been operating either as an LLC or a sole prop, and they've been hearing about S corps. Um, if you form as an S corp, let's call it ballpark for September fifteenth. Even though you've been operating as a, in, in a different formation structure, whether it's us, whether it's another accountant, they can take all of that revenue and expenses and they can clap, they can, you can realize the benefits of the S corp, even though you weren't operating as it. So I would say run and get that done uh, before the 15th, have someone set that up for you so you can realize that savings. Cause as you know, it's a lot of money, right? So um, if you don't do it, then this entire year of uh, revenue expense will be classed as what you had before. And, and you know, you might be leaving five to $10,000 on the table. So Hopefully, I just gave whoever's listening here five, ten grand. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I can firsthand say that that uh, has been the case for us. We uh, we got that advice from you and immediately uh, reclassified it as that, and we've definitely saved a ton of money. So that is, apps. That's something I, I would never have known. You know, as a business owner, you just you don't think about these things. You know, another great like I had a, a mortgage lender friend of mine just throw out there a couple months ago. Hey, have you thought about refinancing? Because I I'm not thinking about it. I'm running a business, and I did, and we saved a ton. Of, it's just business owners are so busy just running their business. They don't have time to think about these sorts of things. So it's stuff like that, that you really stand to benefit from when you have an ongoing partner, you know, like hike, I just, it's, I just, I love what you've done from a disruption standpoint with this type of offering. I think every business um, should really take a hard look at it because it's just been, it's been fantastic for us. So, um, you know, before, before we head off, um, last thing I want to just throw out there is uh, where, where can people find you? Uh, so, uh, if you are interested in hike, uh, please check us out at h y k e dot me hike dot me. If you want to follow me, I'm at human radfar on Twitter h o o m a n radfar r a d f r on Twitter. Awesome! And just uh, for socialistics listeners, uh, you actually get to uh, save fifty percent off your first two months. Uh, you can either use the code socialistics twenty, or just go ahead and click the link uh, below in the show notes or wherever you see it, uh, and you can save yourself a little, f- a few bucks getting started with Hike. Again, I highly recommend it. Uh, Human, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you, getting to learn uh, more about Hike and, and your background, and uh, I just uh, really excited about continuing to work with you guys in, in the future. Thanks so much for hosting and uh, look forward to continue to partner with you and hopefully we can do this again sometime. Awesome. Thanks a ton again. Uh, That's it for this episode of Socialistics. Uh, We will catch you next time. Thanks for listening. Thanks.